Hello, everyone. My name is Jay Hen. I serve as the Executive Director of Headquarters Operations, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to the 2020 Combined Federal Campaign at NASA As we all know, NASA is a place where people often come to work and stick around for a very long time, so I'm sure that most of you are very familiar with the CFC, what it is, and how it works. Bottom line, the CFC is our opportunity to help those less fortunate than we. There are over 6,000 charities participating in this year's campaign, and you will hear some of their stories later on in our kickoff program. You may not, however, know that the CFC in its current form is not all that old, at least not relatively speaking. Prior to the 1950s, on-the-job fundraising in the federal workplace was essentially an uncontrolled free-for-all. Quotas for agencies and individuals were freely established, designations were not allowed, and supervisors were known to apply pressure to employees. Even with frequent on-the-job solicitations, total receipts for worthy charitable causes were disappointing. In many cases, employees donated their pocket change. It was not until the Eisenhower administration that solicitations by charities were consolidated into three on-the-job campaigns a year, operational ground rules were established, and eligibility for charities tightened. In fact, the executive order that placed these activities under the supervision of a presidential committee staffed by the Civil Service Commission was issued on September 6, 1957, a little over one year before NASA came into existence. In 1964, the first combined campaigns were conducted as experiments in six cities, consolidating all drives into one. The result was a substantial increase in contributions and a highly favorable response within the federal community. Agency managers and employees alike were pleased with having to deal only with a single solicitation. By 1971, all campaigns had become combined and the CFC became the uniform fundraising method for the federal service. Another major change around that time was the introduction of payroll deduction as a form of charitable contribution. This was made possible only by having a truly combined once a year campaign and greatly increased the size of contributions. This year, when giving through the CFC, you decide your method of giving whether payroll deduction, credit card, e-check, or with your time through volunteering opportunities. You decide if it will be a one-time gift or a recurring contribution. There is also a new CFC giving mobile app this year, making it even easier to give back from the device in your own pocket. You will learn more about the CFC from our subsequent speakers. And remember, you can also visit the CFC website GiveCFC.org for more information. For most of us as federal employees, the CFC is something that pops up around this time of year like clockwork and then fades quickly from our view after the end of the giving period. Many of you may not be aware of the number of people and the time and effort required often throughout the entire year to make the CFC possible. Although some of these individuals will get more in-depth and well-deserved introductions shortly, I would like to briefly acknowledge a few of the many supporters and volunteers, both within and outside of NASA, that lead the way. First, I would like to express my appreciation to Administrator Bridenstine and the many officials in charge across headquarters that support our efforts on an annual basis. In particular, I would like to thank Deputy Associate Administrator Melanie Saunders for her participation in our kickoff event. I know how busy you are. Thank you so much for joining us and showing your support. Next, I have had the privilege of being associated with the CFC here at headquarters in my current position for almost 10 years. And for over half an hour now, I have been fortunate to find myself working alongside Mr. Vince McConey. Vince is the chair of the local federal coordinating committee and a key element of the CFC effort. And I'm delighted to have him here with us once again. Thank you, Vince. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank Ms. Cassie Brown, associate director of the combined federal campaign of the national capital area for her continuing support. 
Next, we have someone who somehow manages to fit both the within and outside of NASA criteria at the same time. Other than our NASA headquarters campaign staff and key workers, the person most responsible for our success in each year's campaign is the loaned executive. For those of you who may not know, the CFC loaned executives are a cadre of dedicated senior employees drawn from every department and agency, including NASA, who volunteer several months during the campaign to help other departments and agencies plan and execute their local efforts. Typically, loaned executives support departments and agencies other than their own as a way to share lessons learned and to gain exposure to other parts of the government. This year, as in so many other ways, is different. This year, Maria Furr, from the Office of the Chief Financial Officer, was selected to serve as NASA's own executive to the campaign. We were incredibly pleased when we learned that Maria was also assigned back to us as one of her agency responsibilities. Welcome, Maria, and thank you. Within headquarters, each year we assemble a campaign staff led by our campaign chair to manage the planning, communications, and conduct of the campaign. I am delighted to welcome Ms. Gaytree Johnson back as campaign chair, and we have several returning staff members as well that I am sure she will introduce. Many thanks to you all. And our key workers. These are the individuals from each and every organization who tirelessly work to provide you with information, answer your questions, and yes, remind you that the campaign deadline is rapidly approaching. So please, make it easy on your key worker this year and make your pledges early. Thank you. As I mentioned just a moment ago, I have been involved in a lot of combined federal campaigns, but never one like this. This year's campaign will be entirely virtual, of course, but we can handle virtual. The past seven plus months, though, have been very, very challenging. For the very fortunate among us, that challenge has been one of adapting to a new schedule, finding a place to set up your home office, and trying to remember if WebEx works better with VPN or without. For some of you, though, life has not been so kind. I know that many of you and your families have been devastated. For those of you who have lost family members, my heart goes out to you and your loved ones. And we cannot forget those throughout the country who are facing this pandemic without the support of NASA and our NASA family. This year especially has demonstrated the importance of banding together. We have had to rely on our networks for support through hardships and all of this year's challenges. For many individuals, their network includes the thousands of CFC charities upon whom they rely daily for support. Year after year, I have seen NASA headquarters employees open their hearts and give to the CFC. And in spite of all that we are experiencing, I have no doubt that you will do so again this year. I would like to personally thank all of you in advance for your generosity and support. As I mentioned just a few moments ago, we are extremely pleased to have Gaytree Johnson back to serve as this year's campaign chair. I have said many times, because it is true, that much of our success with the CFC each year is a result of the continuity in our campaign staff. For many years now, our campaign chair has come from the ranks of the campaign team, and we have been able to build on that past experience. NASA headquarters is once again very fortunate to have Gaytree's experience and enthusiasm at the helm of the 2020 campaign. Thank you all again, and please join me in welcoming this year's campaign chair, Ms. Gaytree Johnson. Gaytree? Thank you, Jay. Thank you for those wonderful remarks. Good morning, NASA family. Um, again, my name is Gaytree and I'm the CFC campaign manager for NASA headquarters this year. Thank you for coming out today for the formal event to kick off the 2020 NASA headquarters combined federal campaign. As the CFC theme goes, it is time to show some love. 
So I'm extending my most sincere thanks to Mr. J. Hen for his welcoming remarks and for supporting the CFC each year and supporting the CFC team. As the Executive Director for Headquarters Operations, we appreciate his support each and every year. Next, I would like to introduce another member of agency leadership and a dedicated public servant who is supportive of the CFC, the charities, and the causes that they support. I'm talking about Ms. Melanie Saunders, who is NASA's Deputy Associate Administrator, who will share a few words with you about this year's CFC, a federal giving tradition. Hi, this is Melanie Saunders, NASA's um, Deputy Associate Administrator. Every day, each of you serves our greater community, our nation and our world through your role at NASA headquarters. And every year, each of your generous donations and pledges through the combined federal campaign further your impact by helping those in need. Each gift is valuable beyond the dollar amount. Thousands of vetted, trusted charities take part in the CFC and rely on your support. Answer their call this year. Choose to show some love and be the face of change. Your donation, if you so choose, could help a houseless veteran find a home, assist a single parent in putting a meal on the table and contribute to any of the 6,000 approved charities. The choice of yours. In the midst of this global pandemic, there is no shortage of opportunity to give and to show a great impact to our community. In 2019, federal employees in the CFC National Capital Area pledged more than $34 million to charities through the CFC. And right here in headquarters, employees raised over $267,000. That's amazing. This year, we're going to continue to aim high. As we face global challenges, the need for our support is even greater. While we are aiming high, can you help us reach our headquarters goal of $245,000? I believe in our collective power as employees of NASA and know that we will make a difference together. We explore the universe. We advance aeronautics and technology and we do things that other people consider amazing. I think that this is um, a really, really important mission of NASA, and I'd urge you to participate. This year's theme encourages all to show some love by pledging to one or more of the many worthy charities who rely on these donations throughout the year. You can count this on the CFC to offer a safe, convenient, and easy platform to give back and to support the causes that mean the most to you. I'm ready to show some love with you again and make this year even more successful than before. Join me, stand with all in need, and let's make this our best CFC season yet. Thank you, Gaytree. Thank you. Thank you, Melanie, for your supportive remarks. I appreciate that you came out today to show your support of the CFC and offered words that were not only supportive, but encouraged, motivated, and spoke to the opportunity for each of us to be the face of change by supporting our favorite causes through the charities of our choice. It is great to know that CFC has the support and leadership from a team of people, from our key worker volunteers, the CFC executive team, to agency leadership, and a team from the Combined Federal Campaign of the National Capital Area, or CFC NCA. Every year, NASA headquarters can count on the support of the CFC NCA, and this year is no different. So now I would like to introduce our keynote speaker, who most of you already know, Mr. Vince McConey, chair of the CFC NCA Local Federal Coordinating Committee. It's great to join you for NASA's kickoff for the 2020 Combined Federal Campaign. Are you ready to be the face of change? I know I am. First, I want to thank the Administrator and Executive Director Hen for their participation, leadership, and support. We know how valuable their time is and we appreciate their contributions to CFC. However, most importantly, I want to thank each of you for taking time today to show some love for causes you care about. Through your participation today, you embody the spirit of the campaign. You are the face of change. Now this year's campaign looks and feels a little bit different as we're meeting up online as to opposed to an in-person event at NASA's headquarters but our goal and mission remains exactly the same. It's exciting to harness new tools to communicate directly with you whenever and wherever you can watch. For the past 59 years, federal employees have contributed more than $8.4 billion to help those in need in our communities across the nation and around the world. 
Last year, federal employees contributed nearly 84 million to their favorite causes and charities. And here in the national capital area, we raised more than $34 million of that. Additionally, we contributed 70,000 volunteer hours and raised an additional $1 million this past spring through a special solicitation for pandemic relief. And at NASA headquarters, you raised over $265,000 last year. Here are a few ways we're putting that money to work right now. $24 funds new recipes for delicious, healthy school meals. $48 funds two life-changing cataract surgeries in the developing nation. $120 supports a STEM outreach program in an underserved community. Look at NASA, your job every day is to discover and expand knowledge for the benefit of humanity. And NASA and your mission has always been something that's motivated me. It's so incredible to watch what you do as we together explore space and the science that's been harnessed through that. Through CFC, you extend this mission by supporting charities and causes that are important to you with supplemental donations and pledges. This year, we aim to meet or beat a goal of contributing $30 million through the CFC. With your help, we will exceed that. Now, here are a few reasons why you should use CFC to make your contribution. One, it's convenient. Two, our giving portal is secure. Three, every charity applies and is vetted by federal employees like you every single year. Four, you can give a little bit each pay period or you can contribute in one time gift. And finally, you choose the causes that are important to you. As public servants, we join the federal community with a sense of duty to serve others. The CFC is simply an extension of that service, complementing what we do every day in our work. As Gandhi once said, be the change that you wish to see in the world. And that's what the CFC is about this year. This year, more than ever, we need you. We need you to be the face of change. We need you to help show some love to people we will never meet, but whose lives will be forever changed by our generosity. As this event is done, I need you to do two things. One, I need you to tell your colleagues about CFC. Send them an email. Send them an instant message. Give them a call. Remind them how important this is. And secondly, I need you to go to givecfc.org and make your contribution. It's critical. Thank you so very much. I wish I could be with you in person, but I'm thrilled to be with you virtually. Have a wonderful day, and please show some love. Thank you, Mr. McConey, and good morning to all of you watching. I have the pleasure of introducing the two wonderful charities selected at random by the CFC Central Office for the kickoff of the NASA Headquarters Combined Federal Campaign. The CFC offers 6,000 vetted charities in almost every possible general area of potential giving. And through those vetted charities, you will know that you're going to the cause you want to support and that your donations will make a difference. No matter your areas of interest, old or new, there's something for you in today. See. And in case you want to share something you see today, copies of the information from the charities we will hear from and charities of the week that follow will be available on the NASA headquarters CFC website. So come for new ideas, positive inspirational videos of good work being done today. Our first charity today is Compassion International. Compassion International is a childhood sponsorship and humanitarian aid organization that has operated childhood programs in 25 impoverished countries, including Bolivia, Colombia, Mexico, Haiti, and Kenya, involving more than 2 million participants from infants through young adults. Research in the Journal of Political Economy studied the organization, concluding that it had large and statistically significant impacts on participants' years of school completion, the probability of later employment, as well as the quality of that employment in part as a consequence of increased aspirations of participating children. Representing Compassion International today is Mr. Barry Lem. Thank you, Mark. Well, hello, NASA. It's great to be with you today. It's a, a personal pleasure for me because I'm a child of the 60s and I've always loved what NASA has been able to accomplish uh, through their, their time and their mission. And personally, once again, my last name is Lem, which means in, in NASA speak, lunar excursion model. So that's one personal attachment that I have with NASA. And the second one is that in my 26 year career, the company I work with, we were on every manned space um, mission that NASA ever had. 
So with that, let me start and go into my presentation. So who, who, who is the Compassion International? Uh, we exist as a child advocacy ministry to release children from their spiritual, economic, social, and physical poverty to become responsible, fulfilled Christian adults. Who and where does Compassion serve? For over 70 years, uh, Compassion's been working in 25 countries and four continents. Presently, we work with about 2.2 million children and their families that live on less than $2 a day, which is abject poverty. How we do this is through holistic child development. We want to meet the child um, in a holistic approach in every aspect of their life, physical, social, economical, uh, spiritual, and we are community-based. So we are right in the community and we're there 24 seven. So the way we work is that we uh, uh, get access to clean water for our, our children and their families. Unfortunately, uh, where these countries are, uh, they lack clean water. So we allow them to have access to clean water. Education is another problem for these third world countries. So we provide education and tutoring for these children. Nutritious meals. Um, we were able to uh, provide them with hot meals when they come to our programs and also nutritious snacks. Medical and dental care, of course, is not readily available uh, because of their economic situation. So with Compassion, we're able to have children have medical and dental care throughout the year with us. Also, personal hygiene. We take for granted brushing our teeth, washing our faces, something that we do normally and naturally. Unfortunately, in these countries that we work in, children don't have that opportunity. So we have to teach them how to brush their teeth, how to wash their dishes and, and keep them clean so they don't uh, get sick. Um, the countries we work in as well, uh, children are highly at risk. So we're a safe haven for them from gangs and drugs and child labor and sexual exploitation. The pressures of poverty also um, have such things that are unseen. So we have to provide counseling for these children to make sure that they're emotionally and psychologically uh, okay and, and can be bettered. Uh, we also ha provide home visits because a lot of abuse happens in the home. So we have to go to the homes and know exactly what's going on and meet the family and work with the families. So we were able to do that as well, to go into the homes and see what's going on. That's what we normally are able to do for 70 years, we were able to do that. But unfortunately, COVID has prevented us from doing many of the things that we, we do through our program. So presently, we've had to modify what we do. And I'd like to show you what we're doing now. So here's a little video, um, Compassion, what, what we're doing in response to COVID. Governments across the world have imposed regulations in an attempt to stop the spread of COVID-19. How have these safety measures affected Compassion's operations? Compassion continues to operate in all of our field countries. However, to keep children safe, group activities at child development centers have been temporarily canceled. But this has not stopped us from meeting the critical needs of children. Instead of going to the church, the church is meeting children at home. In many cases, Compassion is delivering food baskets, hygiene kits, and even covering rent for vulnerable families. Please know, we are continuing to intervene in cases of abuse to provide restoration and healing. Program might look slightly different in this season, but Compassion's local church partners have not wavered in their dedication to children and families. So, you've just seen what the uh some of our modifications are been to the program. And I'd like to tell you a little bit of story about Honduras. Honduras, we had a uh, operation grocery delivery going on. And our country director, uh, Ms. Yolanda Rodas, had to personally meet with the president of Honduras. So through that meeting, we were able to set up an opportunity to feed almost 11,000 families and deliver 15 days of groceries and supplies and PPE for them. And what a wonderful opportunity is because we're we're in the community once again and working with the local governments and we were able to do that. So that's a wonderful thing that's happened in Honduras. Um, I'd like to tell you another quick story about one of my most recent visits to El Salvador. Uh, when I was in El Salvador, uh, I was able to uh, go out on the streets to, to feed some of the people um, one evening. And I've been to uh, 11 of our countries uh, over the 20, five years that I've been volunteering with Compassion. 
And I've never seen poverty like this before. So as we were going um, on the streets feeding the, uh, uh, the people, um, San Salvador, the capital of El Salvador, I was watching uh, and, and seeing this uh, great despair and uh, poverty once again that I've never seen uh, before in all the countries I've visited with compassion. And I asked my friend, I said, aren't there any kind of programs or, 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 or government agencies that help people in El Salvador? And my friend looked at me and he goes, no, not really. And I said, well, what, what goes on other than what you're doing? He said, he told me that the big program that the mayor of um, San Salvador came up with was to give the people of the capital of El Salvador a cup of coffee. And I was just stunned. And I, I, thought, I thought about our country and I realized how fortunate we are to have these agencies and departments and uh, uh, countries that see to our, our people that need help. And we have those safety nets all over the place, but we do not have them in most of the uh, third world countries that Compassion works with and, and throughout the world that, that we are not involved with. So um, I'd like to share another video with you that talks about what's going on in Brazil. We're working with the hospitals in Brazil. In Togo, they have a, uh, a water program going on. And in El Salvador, once again, the country I just visited, uh, with the work that's going on there as well, that they were able to work through the gangs, that they're able to have um, some aid get to the folks. So with that, I'd like to show you the next video. So you've seen what's been going on in some of our other countries uh, overseas. And once again, Compassion's had to modify what we've done um, and what we do. So over the last few months, we've been able to partner with our local churches in America to see to the needs of our people in the United States. Over the last two weeks, I've had the opportunity to work with two churches in Brooklyn, and we're calling that the U.S. Feeding Initiative. And with that, you can see some photos up here that we were able to feed almost 2,000 families uh, over the last two weeks in Brooklyn, New Jersey, which is, I mean, I mean, New York, Brooklyn, New York. And this is the first time that we've ever done anything like this because our, our ministry is set up to work overseas. But now that we've seen the need is so great in America, we've had to step back into our own country and partner with our, our, our local churches to help feed um, Americans. And uh, in such a time as this. So um, it's been interesting how we've had to change what we do, but still have the focus on helping others and are not only internationally, but domestically as well. So what can you do through CFC? If you gave $80, you can provide family with food, rice, eggs, meat, milk, corn and, and dry goods. Same thing if you gave almost $2 a week, you could also send more food and nutritional uh, supplements. And you can see as you go up, you can add more things on to help others. But what I'd like to say is that if you partner not only with Compassion, you can partner with all these great other uh, organizations and agencies and ministries that you're seeing presented to you through CFC. You don't have to uh, help with Compassion, but if you do, you can have an opportunity to feed a family if you gave $1 a week. So that would be $52 a year. You could have an opportunity with compassion to feed a family for almost a month. So I just want to encourage you all to take some time to consider 
not only compassion, but once again, all the great ministries that are presented to you through CFC. You, you, you've done such great work through um, NASA, uh, your, your mission to, to reach out to help humankind. Why not help humankind right here in, in, in our country, in the US, United States, in this world? I know you're reaching out beyond our galaxy and further on in our universe, but if you could just consider and helping others right here, that'd be a wonderful thing. So if you'd like to, go, uh, to help out and partner with Compassion, our CFC number is 10522, 10522. And if you'd like to find out more about Compassion, you can look us up at Compassion.com. So thank you for your time. Thank you for considering partnering with Compassion and partnering with any other agency through CFC. Thanks a lot, and may God richly bless your day. Our second charity today is the Partnership for a Healthier America. The mission of the Partnership for a Healthier America is to end childhood obesity within a generation by developing a strong network of leaders at the community, state, and national levels to annually align, affirm, and promote the role of healthy food, physical activity, and the environment play in reversing the childhood obesity epidemic. PHA is committed to helping leaders and organizations facilitate and measure the impact of their commitments against clear and transparent targets while connecting potential partners in the private and non-private sectors to each other and to the correct points of contact in government. Representing the Partnership for a Healthier America today is Ms. Ella Daniels. Thanks so much, Mark. Um, we're, I'm so grateful to be have been invited by, by you and by NASA for, um, to join you today. I know the CFC looks different these days than our than our tabling events and all of our swag, but um, we appreciate your time and attention to learn about um, PHA's work. So I thought maybe I would just do three things, um, tell you a bit about our mission, tell you a little bit about our impact in this moment, and then um, share with you what you can do to partner with Partnership for a Healthier America through the CFC. So our organization, um, PHA, is a national nonprofit organization. We're based in Washington, D.C. We've been in operation for a decade. So we were founded in 2010. And our mission is to transform the food landscape in pursuit of health equity. We have a staff of just only 12 members. So we're a lean and a mean team. Um, and it's been really rewarding to be a part of the organization for um, the last two and a half years. I came to this work um, having worked for the United Nations World Food Program, um, which I'm excited to say just won the Nobel Peace Prize and was a great effort for um, recognition for all the staff that worked there. And after that, I worked at the Capital Area Food Bank in Washington, DC. So I come to this work from a background in communications and also in um, policy related to nutrition. And I'm also a mother of two. So that's another motivation for me and being part of it. I have a three-year-old and a five-year-old and um, shout out to all the working parents out there. It is not easy these days. And so um, all the more reason that I'm motivated to be thinking about, I know that um, my kids rely on, you know, healthier parents raise healthier kids. And I know that I play a big role in that for my kids. And I know that we're up against a lot right now. And so I'm even more motivated by the mission of the organization and thinking about ways that um, we can partner with the private sector to create systemic change within the food landscape in order to make healthy, affordable food accessible for everyone. So happy to um, be sharing um, with you about that. So a little bit about health equity. Um, when we think about the role of food, we consider it to be a primary building block for health. And um, COVID has really exposed the ways that our food system um, is broken in many ways and that this inequity falls along racial and economic lines. Um, as, as you are probably aware, the challenge of food insecurity makes it difficult for young families to focus on um, eating healthy because it's so much easier to find a diet um, that if you're looking for cheap options, typically, those foods contain more calories than they do more nutrients. And I think that one of the things that we're really learning in my specific work with PHA that I'm so motivated by is looking at simplifying the science around the early and um, repeated exposure to vegetables and what an important 
early intervention that is as kids are forming their taste preferences and going forward. So that's a little bit about the initiative that I'm working on. Um, it's, it's super exciting. Um, it's called Shaping Early Palates Initiative. And it's a, a work convening the um, baby food manufacturers, convening early childhood education partners, convening pediatricians, dietitians to really look at the science, consolidate the evidence, and then um, discuss ways that we could transform um, product options that are currently available for, for um, babies and toddlers to see more veggie forward options. So that's just an example of how we might work with the private sector and other public health partners in order to create um, voluntary business practice changes and systemic change so that we're all seeing that as we show up at the grocery store, as it hits our pocketbooks, et cetera. So a bit about um, what we're doing in this moment. Um, our impact in this moment is really unique. We had the opportunity um, when so many folks in the food industry were being furloughed early on during the pandemic, we had the opportunity to really look at some food that had otherwise been going to institutional partners like hospitals, um, cruise lines, you know, you, you name it, and think about where was that food going to go? And at the same time, the intersection of folks who were without because either they had been furloughed or um, they had had, um, um, you know, their, their access to fresh food had been interrupted. And, and one of the things that has been so rewarding about, about that work in particular is the relationship between COVID and what we're really talking about, you know, in terms of diet-related illness. So we know that, um, that you know, nutrition insecurity uh, leads to diet-related conditions, and that's really driving the highest rates of hospitalization at this time and death from COVID-19. So 20% of COVID patients with underlying conditions, in, um, including diet-related disease like obesity, diabetes, and heart disease, have died compared with less than 2% of patients without those conditions. And so we really see, again, underscoring the point that food is the primary building block for health. Um, and the, the, the unfortunate case that so many um, in the United States do not have um, uh, reliable access to healthy, affordable um, food. So what we're doing, um, what I wanna show you, and I have a video that, that we can tee up, is a program that we started, the first one launched in Denver. It's called our COVID-19 Fresh Food Pilot Fund. Um, and through that, we've distributed over um, 600,000 servings of fresh fruits and vegetables. So this isn't just, um, obviously at this point, people are hurting and really any sort of relief is really important, but it was so important to PHA and our partners to think about that, that we weren't um, expediting relief for families at the expense of health. So health is really built into the model. It's built in with community partnerships and it's built in that we're studying actually um, what is the capacity of um, recipients to pay and their willingness to pay so that we can start to incorporate that with private sector partners in those communities about options that are um, uh, accessible at an accessible price point for families, because we know that families do want to eat healthier food, but oftentimes, you know, fresh produce is out of um, your budget if you're on a restricted budget. So a, a little bit about, um, about this program, we're also gonna continue it into Rochester. And again, um, it's just been a really interesting way that we are finding ourselves responding to the, you know, to the interest from partners who no longer have the same markets um, for their fresh produce, and then matching that with what we know is an increased need in the community. So I will um, let you watch this video. We're working with a partnership for a healthier America because this neighborhood already had a lot of low income families and underserved families out of jobs during the pandemic. We're doing the best we can to make sure that there's access to healthy food during these times. We had a little food pantry that we were doing about 100 to maybe 150 people a week. And then when COVID hit, we went to, to uh, 2,500 people a week. 
we really had a huge shortage of healthy fruits and vegetables, especially as COVID-19 was starting to take impact on our community. Our food banks were really struggling to get access to healthy food and they just could not get it. Partnership for a Healthy America has been sending us about 275 boxes every Tuesday. Um, and they're full of just amazing nutritious vegetables and fruit and we're using those boxes to give groceries to our neighbors. They give us 500 of these boxes every Tuesday, right? And you get lettuce, fresh lettuce, mushrooms, pears, oranges, uh, grapefruits, onions, everything uh, that you could use to make a meal. People were really rushing to the stores if they could afford to and buying up everything that was available. And that meant that people who maybe couldn't afford to buy in bulk had even less opportunity to get access to those fresh fruits and vegetables. So it's really filling a critical need for our community and for our emergency food providers in the city. During COVID, we haven't had any business going on. So we opened up the parking lot and created a drive through so families can safely come through. We have a volunteer with a mask handing out the boxes of food as well as the fresh made meals. I can't tell you how many people drove up and once they saw what we were handing them, like a full box of groceries, they just started crying. We had moms saying they couldn't remember the last time they had enough food to provide an actual sit down family meal for their family. give you a sense of one of the ways that Partnership for a Healthier America is having an impact moment. And um, I invite you to consider partnering with us on this. So as you think about what impact your donation to the CFC would have, um, think about um, that video and the images of that food going to families. And that's one example of a way that your support um, would be put to great use in order to provide healthy food for all. So I um, really appreciate your time today. Um, really appreciate your attention and just wanted to leave you with our PHA CFC number, which is 26370, 26370. And if you wanna learn more about our mission and work, um, you can head to our website, which is a healthieramerica.org. A healthieramerica.org. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ella. What a very impressive approach to fighting hunger and childhood obesity. And the breadth of the work that you're doing is really awesome. Well, I think we've come almost to the end. Whether this is your first experience with the CFC or your 10th, we are glad that you came to the kickoff today and thank you for your continued support of the CFC. I want to thank Mr. Jay Hinn, Ms. Melanie Saunders, and Mr. Vince McConey for speaking at our kickoff. I also want to thank NASA Headquarters CFC Executive Committee members, Nicole Pinckney, Irma Rodriguez, Dr. Mark Shapanik, and Mary Fenton. Thank you to the wonderful charities, Compassion International, and the Partnership for a Healthy, Healthier America for participating in our kickoff and sharing the worthy causes that they champion to help those in need. Thank you to Maria Furr, who is our NASA's loan executive this year. As everyone's mentioned earlier, you may recognize the name because she is already a part of the NASA and my OCFO family. Thank you to Cassie Brown, Edna De Leon, Chris Jones, and all of the CFC NCA staff who worked together to help make our kickoff possible. Thank you to Mr. Kevin Berg, Eric Amo, and the printing services. And finally, sending a huge thank you to our very important NASA key workers who are the boots on the ground and make our campaign a success every year. Please start thinking about the causes you want to support and how you can make an impact to help those in need right here. Please reach out to your key workers for help with making your pledge. Please visit givecfc.org and donate now. Every year we combine our efforts to raise money, volunteer, and show some love for our favorite charities. The CFC is a way for us to engage with each other. 
So please be on the lookout for more CFC activities. Goodbye for now, and thank you for showing some love to the CFC.